Welcome to Silicon Heartland, from farmland to foundry fabs. We are in the air again over Intel Ohio 1. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's your boy, Luca Tiki. We're going to get an update of recent progress over the site since we were last in the air about three weeks ago. So with the establishing shot, you can see quite a bit of progress has occurred here to the first fab where all the cranes are surrounding. And in the foreground, the office building has uh, made a bit of progress as well. We're going to go ahead and fly to the right so we can get a good bird's eye view of what's going on at this 920 some odd acre site. Here you can see the commodities infrastructure building in the center. And at the right, you'll see the lay down yard with many uh, pieces of equipment and components awaiting installation. And finally, in the foreground coming into view, this is the AEP substation. So we'll go ahead and punch on in and get a closer look at these massive transformers. There are a few people walking around to give you a sense of the size of some of these components. So now we're really punched in here on one of these massive transformers, much larger than that truck there next to it, but a great uh, representation of the scale. These transformers have had their fins attached or hanging off to the side. Just a complex, extremely complex piece of machinery. So we'll take a look at some of the additional wiring harnesses and whatever those spark plug looking things are. I know their name, but I'll have to uh, look up online. But if you do know, go ahead and leave a comment down below. So we'll tilt the drone back up here. And uh, by my count, there are five of these transformers on site. And back out to a wide shot here. I'm gonna work my way from the right edge, west edge of the site uh, back Going east to the left, here's the lay down yard. We'll get a closer look here in a moment. And as we really punch on in, you can get a good close look at um, just the number of components here awaiting their installation. Again, those four long rectangles at an angle here, those are the air separation handlers. We're waiting for those to be erected and stood upright. Here you can see various components still wrapped from transportation. The blue appear to be tanks of some kind. Various uh, other vessels and countless shipping containers. Again, these were part of the Ohio super loads. Many of them moved last summer. A considerable number of road closures or rolling closures as they brought these up from the Ohio River. And now we'll take a new sweep across the commodities infrastructure. There are five cooling fans there in the center of your screen with three additional spots to be completed at a later date. So up to eight cooling fans by my count. And the commodities infrastructure supports a lot of the liquids, chemicals, gases necessary for semiconductor manufacturing. These will be prepped, stored in these buildings here. So again, we're working to the east, flying to the left, and we'll move on down the road to take up a new spot and get a closer look at uh, some of this additional infrastructure. And here's another look at those cooling fans. You can see quite a bit of their progress. And now just coming into view is a new tent-like structure uh, that was recently erected here. I believe this will be additional meeting space and perhaps replace the two Kwanzaa huts. And here you
you can see a closer look at some of the buildings coming along. The steel superstructures have continued to progress here in very large facilities to support uh, everything necessary for semiconductor manufacturing. And now just coming into view are a few additional excavations. Uh, I believe this is for uh, various uh, stormwater management or conduits or various infrastructure on the site. In the foreground is a new concrete pad with a rather complex pattern on it. I imagine some building or structure will sit atop this, obviously. Wondering if this might be the air separation handlers, um, but that would look uh, different than the renderings that we've seen online. If anyone knows what this structure might be someday, uh, please go ahead and let me know in the comments. I follow Joe Tagmeyer, who flies a drone over Elon Musk, uh, Tesla's Gigafactory in Austin, Texas, and they have six uh, uh, fans for their cooling center. This will have eight potentially someday. So we're going to keep flying the drone down the road to take up a new vantage point, and I believe we're going to get a closer look at the superstructure again of those supporting buildings. We've had quite a bit of rain recently, so you can see it pooled on the concrete slab there. And again, this is a Sunday, no one's on site. I really want to zoom in here for viewers to give them a detailed view of the progress of the second module, or fab number two. Uh, its basement uh, has been completed but it has effectively been paused as all activity is on module one, which we're going to take a closer look at here. You can see the crane in the foreground uh, is getting ready to attach a load and pick up another tile. Bear in mind that each one of these concrete slabs has been picked by the crane and lifted into position. It's a uh, ballet in the clouds to move a very heavy tile or square and position it with incredible precision. So we'll go ahead and orbit the drone a bit. Take a new view at uh, the fan progress. Looks like about uh, four flights of stairs to get up to the top. And again, they are walking on the clean room floor, or what will be the clean room floor at some point. Below that is the clean subfab level, and below that, just at the bottom of the screen, is the utilities level. And closer view of the office building, which will sit in front of the fabs. wide shot to look at just the tremendous scale of this installation, all of the cranes and the choreography that goes along with that. And a big site such as Intel Ohio requires big cranes, so we're going to take a closer look here at the Liebeer 12500, there it is affectionately known as Ms. Armstrong. You can see it's not in use. It's been tied down. Uh, it's boom kept in tension. Uh, you can see the block there and a few of the counterweights just to stabilize the crane should there be any high wind this weekend. And next in Ms. Armstrong is one of two Liebeer 11350s that are on site that also do several of the concrete slab picks. And there are probably 10 or 11 of the uh, red tower cranes as well. I think these lift various construction materials and uh, 
low energy, low weight, uh, low mass items necessary for the fab's construction. So we'll take a closer view at what's going on the clean room floor. We'll go ahead and punch in here. You can take a look at uh, some sped up footage of its construction. Forgive the graininess of the footage, it's the digital zoom, but you can see that they're infilling between all of the honeycomb slabs with a concrete mixture. Very interesting construction technique. I would estimate that those slabs are approximately two feet thick. Uh, for the clean room floor, they're thicker uh, with that honeycomb pattern, certainly hollow in some spaces. One last wide shot on this Sunday morning to see progress as it looked here in July of 2025. And I appreciate all you viewers who stayed to watch. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for hitting the notifications. Thanks for commenting. It certainly helps the algorithm. And uh, until next time, we'll see you in the air. It's gonna take